Hello everyone. In this example, I'm going to show you how to create a modular user interface using NGUI. Let's start by creating a very simple user interface. I'm just going to use the Alt Shift S to create a sprite, where you can go through the NGUI menu, of course. I'm going to assume that you are familiar with uh, how to use NGUI by now. If you haven't, please watch the tutorial on how to use NGUI 3.0. So, I'm going to create a simple stretch sprite. Now, by default, if I wanted this sprite to fill the entire window, all I would do is uh, attach a stretch script to it. Now that I have a stretch script, I'm just going to set it to both, and now it fills the entire screen. This is useful if you're trying to create uh, a backdrop for the, your, your user interface, for example, and you want to have it fill the entire screen. So, for example, if I was to change this to be a tiled sprite instead, and then change the sprite to be a wooden background, you will notice that now I have an entire screen filled with a wooden background looking sprite. And now I'm going to create an actual window on top of this. So I'll shift this again with a wooden atlas and for the sprite, well, let's use this one. Change it to be sliced. And now I have something that kind of resembles a darker window. Of course, if I wanted to have it be attached to the bottom left corner of the screen, I would use an anchor. For the anchor, I would specify the bottom left. And now I should probably change the pivot point of the widget itself to be bottom left as well. So now I have the sprite attached to the bottom left corner of the screen. And if I change the screen itself, it will stay in the bottom left corner. Let's add another sprite to it. I'm gonna use a uh, button, for example. Again, with a sliced. And in this case, say I wanted this sprite to look like this, for example. And always take this part of uh, the parent, and the parent being the, the sprite I created earlier. Well, you can actually do that. You can do that by using a combination of anchors and a stretch script. So let's start with the anchor first. For the anchor, I'm actually going to specify a container, a container being this one. I'm going to call it the window. So this one will be called content, by the way, just for clarity's purposes. I'm going to have content reference the window as container. So what's going to happen is now the content is always going to be at the center of the window. Of course, I don't want it to be at the center. I want it to be based off the top. So I'll do exactly that. Of course, now I want it to be offset down below. You can do that by adjusting the pixel offset until it is in a proper place. Like so, for example. Looks like minus 90 is the way to go in this case. So now what's going to happen when I adjust the size of the parent is the child will stick with it. Of course now, if I was to attach a stretch script, it's uh, not going to be exactly correct. Let me show you. Window as the container object and for the style, say I want it to be both just to show you. In this case, it is offset. And that happens because the sprite itself was actually using a center pivot and the anchor is offset. What I should do instead is change this sprite to actually use another pivot, one of the corner pivots. And now that I've done that, I should also modify the UI anchor to use the same pivot. So in this case, it's top left. So I'm just going to choose the top left for the anchor. Now that I've done that, I can actually change the Y back. 
and if I happen to resize the window at this point, the content will stay exactly the same size, predictably so. Say I wanted to add some padding to this window. I can do that by selecting the content and giving some border padding values. So, for example, something like this and uh, like that. So, let's say 24 and 40. And I, I can actually do the same thing on the anchor by specifying a pixel offset. This will allow me to position the widget exactly how I want it to be. Like so, for example. Well, just to adjust that a little bit further to give us some more space to work with, I'm going to leave this at 60. So now, when I resize the parent, you'll notice that the child stays proportional and in exactly in the place where I want it to be. Let's add another one of these. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it. This one I'm going to call chat input. And instead of using the top left, I'm going to change this to use the bottom left instead. Likewise, the pivot point of the widget is also going to be bottom left. For the padding, I'm going to change this to be 12 instead. And for, well, in this case, I probably shouldn't even uh, use UI stretch on both because I don't really want it to resize based on height. I actually only want it to resize based on width. So I'm just going to do that. Horizontal, which allows me to modify the height as I see fit, to something like this, for example. Now I can actually specify some other padding for uh, leaving some space for the bottom, say 100, for example. The last thing I'm going to do is add an actual button here. I'm just going to add it as is, position it down here, and of course adjust the size, because right now it's way too big. So 60, nope, 80, too much, 70 it is. And for height, something like 30, 32, that's good enough. I'm going to position it here. Of course, right now, if I was to adjust the parent, it will not stay in place. Can you guess what I missed? I'm guessing you can. An anchor. Now that I have an anchor, I'm going to specify a window as a container. Same thing I did before. And for the side, of course, bottom right. Bottom right offset it so that it is in a correct place. Looks like minus 50 is about right. And 26. Yeah, 26 it is. Alt Shift C to automatically adjust the collider size or you can go through the menu. And just for clarity's purposes because I'm a perfectionist, I'm just going to change the button color to something a little bit more readable. And I'm going to call it send. So there we go. There is now a chat looking window thingy that actually will resize and stay uh, of proper dimensions as you resize it. Now, before I wrap this up, I should mention one last thing. In a GUI 302 and earlier versions, you had to have anchors and uh, the stretch scripts be siblings with whatever they're referencing as the container. So in this case, you'll notice that everything is a sibling of each other, even the window itself. In the latest version of an GUI, you can actually parent them without any issues, and it will work fine. But if you're watching this video and are using GUI 3.0.2 or earlier, note that you cannot have them be parented like this. 
you have them be beside each other in order for this to work correctly. And that's it. I hope you found this video to be informative. And thanks for watching.